Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Prime Time with Alex Stein. And tonight is going to be a super special occasion because we're going to have a sit down live interview with my actual biological father, Rhett Stein. And I know some of you will be very disappointed to find out that Tucker Carlson did not bust a nut in my mama, but the man that actually did bust that nut will be sitting down with us for the next hour to go over the idiosyncrasies of a complex father-son relationship. Tonight is going to be an emotional roller coaster full of ups and downs, but I'm so grateful to have all of the chat rats with us tonight to see the love between a father and a son. This interview will be unlike any of my other interviews because I want you guys to participate. I want to include your questions so that this can be a community effort to be the greatest episode of Prime Time with Alex Stein in history. So we need you to help me make my father proud, and I want to entertain all you badass chat rats at the same time. So I hope you have some tissues because things are about to get more emotional than a trans rights rally in San Francisco. I hope you guys are ready because I'm not even 100% sure I am. So stay tuned because the sparks are about to fly with Primetime 99 and Big Papa Stein. Now let's start the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Primetime with Alex Stein. I'm your host, Alejandro Stein, and we have an incredible episode for you this evening. We have my biological father, Harold Rhett Stein, on the show today. And I think his phone is going off. That's a good way to start the show. Show my dad. Dad, what's going on? Oh, God. <laughs> Somebody calling? Off now. No, it's okay. We're just, you know, we're just live. There's a few hundred people watching. <laughs> All right, but before we get into my father, uh, we're going to have a lot of hard-hitting questions, and we really want you guys to participate. So if you guys leave a super chat, we're going to all super chats that are questions for my father, we're going to ask. So make sure to ask some hard-hitting questions. Also, we have Letty from Fish Tank to answer some of the uh, harsh allegations that were verbalized against her by the one, the only John, who was on the show last night. So we're going to get into the weeds of that. But before we do all that, we have to start the show with my least favorite part and Jimmy's favorite part, the caption contest. All right, so <clears throat> this is a picture of Big Nasty and Darius, and this is them, Dad. They're about to throw me off a roof right here, okay? Did, we, did I give my dad a fair enough introduction, though, after the phone thing, though, Jimmy? I don't know if I... Okay, here, let's, yep. actually, let's go back and give him more of a... Yeah, let's do that. So a lot of people out there know that my biological stepfather is Tucker Carlson. You guys know that, I know that, Tucker knows that, but a lot of you don't know the real man that birthed me, the man whose semen that I grew up to be, this big, strong man. I started off as a little thing like this, and I was inside this man's body, and now I'm six foot three, about to box in my first exhibition boxing match. So I guys, I wanna give a big round of applause for the man that made me, the one, the only, Red Stein. <laughs> what did you think about that intro, Don? I like that intro very much, thank you. Do you appreciate that? Very appreciated. Very appreciative. Well, tonight, Dad, we're going to get into the weeds. I know you met a few of the casting characters on the show. I'm sure you're probably like, what the hell is going to happen tonight? Are you nervous? A, a little bit. I'm concerned. Even though you're a career bail bonds and dad, you've dealt, with, you've dealt with cartel members, you've dealt with drug dealers, celebrities, and you still have a little trepidation about this evening. Just apprehension all the time. I just <laughs> like to look at the like look through the blinds, Alex, and bend the blinds. Okay, but before we get into the casual contest, I actually want to talk about this. This is no kayfabe, Dad. Was it hard raising me, or do you do you take some of the blame for me being a bad kid? It was very traumatic. A certain parts of it. It was traumatizing. It was very hard, especially when you when you were at Bradfield in elementary school and had to have been removed from the classroom on many. Oh, show days. the picture. Do you have the picture of me and the Boy Scouts? Uh, we that we have it in the B block stuff. We'll just after the caption contest. Okay, we'll do the caption contest first because we haven't ordered this thing. Dad, we're gonna get into all that trauma I caused you. But before we do that, we got to get up to the caption contest. Like I said, this is the part of the show where you guys interact and you're gonna pick which caption is the funniest. Now you got Big Nasty and Darius about to throw me off a roof. This is how Palestinians actually treat uh, the gay members of their society. They throw them off roofs. So we're making a cultural joke. And you guys made some even funnier ones. All right, Jimmy, what's the first one? Darko Nation. Jimmy, get the car. Alex blew his taint out. He's going to need stitches for real. Okay, 
That's okay. All right, number two. Caption two, the shelf life board game something. Help, Jimmy. I'm crowning. White Darius Jr. is on the way. See, that one's pretty good. I'm pregnant. Okay, so now I'm a transgender mother. I like that because Google does say, Dad, you know if you Google, can a man have a baby? Google says yes. Did you know that? I did not know that. It says yes. We can show you that later in the show. All right, number three. At Soccer Thing 77 I said the no-no word, and they made me their king. What is that reference? Why don't I know that reference? I don't know. Maybe we can ask Darius later. Darius, come here. Where are you, Darius? Do you know what this reference is? Darius isn't even watching the show. Hurry, Darius. Do you know what this reference is on the screen? Read it out loud, Jimmy. The no-no word? What is the no-no word? He doesn't know what he's doing. Dad, sometimes we get Darius' head. Can you show Darius' head fully? And we'll just play the bongos on it because his head is empty. He doesn't have a brain in here, Dad. Did you know that? That's why it makes that noise. Did you hit my head? It sounds different because there's something in there. All right, now let's get to the uh, All right, caption. caption four. From I, Timmy Rob. I don't want to be one. gay today. Say it, Darius. I don't want to be gay today. 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 Okay, we like number four, Dad. Jimmy, you might not know this, Dad, but I actually put Jimmy through gay conversion therapy, and now he got a woman pregnant. Jimmy, tell him about your time in gay conversion therapy and how much it helped you. Dad, look at that monitor. Dad, Dad, this way. This way. Dad, no, no, other way. Like, that's your screen. Okay, Dad. Jimmy, yep. tell, tell. Uh, yeah, so gay conversion therapy. Alex signed me up because he said he wanted me to stop being gay. Show up first day. Alex is the instructor. But they actually, um, they told me that I'm not supposed to like this anymore. That's semen. I got this from gay conversion therapy doing a little spring cleaning. I forgot. They told me I learned to hate this little spermy. Okay, stop, Jimmy. Now tell my dad about how why you have such soft semen. He had a girl then. I mean, I, I'm still trying to figure out why I have such yeah. soft semen. Dad, you had a man. You were able to be a man. You birthed me a man. What do you have to say to just an inferior man like Jimmy that just can't even make a boy baby? I don't really have a nice co a co a comment on that, that Jimmy, on that. Cause do you have a mean comment? Do you have a mean comment? I don't have a, a comment at all on it. That's fair. No that's comment, a, that's Jimmy. That's an area that I don't, don't want to comment on. What? on That he uh, was, went from gay to straight? Yes. Uh, hey, Mr. Stein, what did you think was going to happen on the show? No, he doesn't watch the show, but Jimmy's favorite movie was Brokeback I, Mountain. I don't watch the show a lot, so I didn't know I'd be proposed that type of question. Oh, Dad, you're going to ask all kinds of questions. Darius, tell them about your sexuality, right? Just sexual. But what does that mean? You've slept with guys and girls? <laughs> <laughs> what is so fu what is so funny? How, I mean, just answer the question. Have you slept with men and women, Darius? No, just you know, just women and the glory, in the hole? glory hole with you, guys. Yeah, he went to a but glory there wasn't hole. Really sleeping with him, you know, it was just how like, disgusting is it that? Was just that? letting off steam, you know. Right. It's different, you know. You know, it's difficult for me to discuss someone's sexuality, Alex. What someone wants to do. It is. I, I, I'm not as vocal as you are about it. Uh, and I don't have. A, I'm. I guess I'm a loss. Loss for words <laughs> that I'm being asked that type of question. Well, now's the perfect time for an ad read. All right, perfect time for an ad read. My dad's lost for words. This whole episode, he's gonna be lost for words because dad, we're just getting started. So buckle up, Buttercup. All right. I want to tell you about the best wholesale land value in the state of Texas. This is never before offered prime Texas acreage. Saturday, October 21st, is the new section grand opening of Prime Texas Properties at Wholesale Prices. Get a brand new Lake Access Barnabonium ready for your finishes on six plus acres for only $119,900 or three 10 acre Lakeview Estates priced to sell in one day from only $49,900. Limited availability, so don't miss out. On Saturday, October 21st, you can own two plus acres of direct dockable lakefront on Trophy Bass Lake for only $59,900, and it's minutes to town for shopping, dining, and the properties are serviced by a gated entrance, paved roads, utilities, and high-speed internet so you can work from home. It's a multi-million dollar clubhouse. There's an equestrian center and a resort-style pool exclusively for owners. That's right. Call 765-LAKE now. New section, grand opening, Saturday, October 21st. Buy directly from the developer and save thousands on October 21st. These properties are wholesale, price to sell in one day. Call 765-LAKE now. Again, that's 765-525-3669 or online at TXLandDeal.com. Again, that's TXLandDeal.com.
Dot-com. Go buy a house. Dad, should we buy one of those houses for 59000 or does that seem like a scam? No. That seems like, seems like a really good deal. It seems like a good deal. Seems like a really good deal to me. I know, but you always said if a deal's too good to be true, it's too good to be yeah, true. Yeah, but that seems like a real fair deal, especially in today's deal. And that become, Barnuminiums are becoming real popular. People could, uh, Barnuminiums are cool. Everybody <laughs> very, likes them. Very bar, cool. Yeah. I like the I was looking at some the other day. We need a Barnuminium. No question. Because we have so much junk. Maybe the sponsor will sell you one and reduce That's price. what I'm saying. Jimmy, ask the sponsor and see if we can get a $5,000 discount of the $59,900. Is that the one that's dockable? On Trophy Bass? I will let them. I will ask them. Thank Please. you. Please. Thank you, Jimmy. We'd really appreciate it, Jimmy, because we need a barnemonium. We got a bunch of cats, dogs. We got a bunch of junk in our house. So we could really use that barn demonium so we can put a bunch of junk in there. Got it. Okay. So now, Dad, we'll get to some of the hard hitting questions. I know that made you feel a little uncomfortable talking about Darius's sexuality, but on this show, we ask hard hitting questions. And I'm famous for asking hard hitting questions to famous politicians like AOC. Eric Swalwell. Who else? Dan Crenshaw. Who else have I confronted? Marshawn Lynch. Uh, so I ask hard questions. But the, those, I'm not asking you to throw me softballs, but that's a particular area that I don't feel that I want to comment on. That's fine. That's or, fine. Or, or, or share yeah, But my... we're pro-gay here. Tell them this, Darius. We're pro-gay. You see well, this we, we, I have a lot of gay friends, Alex. So do I. We have gay family members. And you have we, a gay uncle. Yes, and we love gay people. And, they, and he's taking care of you very much. I'm not saying that I'm anti-gay. We love uh, gay. Okay. Okay. We just, you know. That, that, definitely, I have a lot of friends that are. And like, I do, too. And we, they're uh, very good Jimmy, people. Jimmy, tell my dad that we're pro-LGBTQ plus I and that I'm gay or Palestine. I run that. I run the Gays or Palestine Facebook group no, in Plano, we, Texas. No, we love the gays. We've done so much gay stuff on the show. You have no <laughs> idea. You have no idea. Well, I don't get to see the show quite enough, enough to understand. But uh, That's a good decision. That's a uh, smart decision, Dad. Please try to keep yourself in watch. But I do want to support Alex and support what he's doing. I just didn't Do you support it? it? I know you support me, right? No, you support me. No, no, but let me ask this question. You support me no matter what. If I was selling hot dogs on the street, if I was selling cars, you would support me. But do you support what I'm doing? Does that make sense? I'm glad you're in the entertainment business. There's some things that I'm very critical that you do mm -hmm. that I feel are going to somehow later on landmine you. Mm -hmm. And I step and I worry about that a lot. And I know you do worry. And, you know, Jimmy, this is true. And I'm not trying to put my dad on blast. When I started going to city council meetings, tell him what you told me, Dan. I asked him to quit doing it because I didn't think it was appropriate for him to do it. I thought it was going to cause him a lot of embarrassment. Uh, I did. thought about it a lot for myself. It might cause me embarrassment. Uh, so I had a, a motive somewhat about it. But it uh, And then I scared Alex would get hurt, that uh, someone would uh, target him and try to... Uh, slow him down because of some of his conduct at the meetings. I think the cause is good and you have a right to speak and do that, but it's just a different form. I wouldn't take the same form that you do, but obviously you've been very successful doing it and I'm very proud that you do it. I was very surprised how it took off and how many people stopped me and compliment. How many me. people do people really suck? I get people all the time at Starbucks in the neighborhood Come up and say, show my dad when he's saying this, uh, George, please. And it's a very nice comment. He never, he's never told me this. What is a lot? We're a big fan of Alex. Several people, uh, people I've grown up with, people that know, uh, which I was. So that very, makes you feel very proud, right? Very proud of you. But, but this is one thing, Dad, and I feel really guilty about. You know, recently I had a big boxing match against Mo Dean, and the fight got canceled. I didn't care about the monetary loss. I was a little mad because I trained that I didn't get to fight. But the thing that I was most devastated about is that it disappointed you because you had your friends you were telling people about it so it's kind of a weird thing where well i think guilty. if i had been there that i would have stopped you doing that Yeah, because i told you on the phone and but you said I, not to do it and i did it anyway the stunt we just carried the stunt went too far mo absolutely knew about it uh it was a stunt that went bad that made you look extremely poor and the uh you lost a really good gig from that i did but dad right now with the with the hamas palestine stuff i was kind of kind of on the right side right well, I, I mean, that can't even be in the same field what's going on now. It's, it's, it's a tragedy. What's it happening. is a tragedy. I no. Mean, it's, more, it's, it's a human tragedy of what's happening right now. It is. Yeah. And we're going to get into this human tragedy. But what is not a human tragedy, do you see this beautiful boy right there, Dad? You birthed that. Do you, do you know what room that is in right there? That's in the sunroom upstairs in Grassmere. Where's that? Right there. You see that monitor? Okay. You see? Can you yeah, see that? Yeah. Okay. Now, you were talking about how I got kicked out of everything. Remember? 
Well, Alex, I mean, I think you were, might have been one of the few first graders that were removed from the classroom <laughs> in Bradfield uh, to be removed and gone into a different setting. Uh -huh. uh, I had to go to Starbucks during the days because I told the school I would be within five minutes yes. of you to get you calmed down or come over to the school. And I spent more time at the school, than, and I went to Bradfield myself, mm -hmm. but I spent as much time going to school as I did coming over to mitigate your conduct in the classroom. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And, and you see this picture right here. I think I got kicked out of Boy Scouts shortly thereafter, I think, after this picture. And that's, I think that's at the Bradfield Auditorium is where that is right there, Dad. I don't recall you being kicked out of Boy Maybe Scouts. I wasn't. I, maybe I, I, maybe I just had to leave that you thing. You were never in Boy Scouts. You were in Cub Scouts. Cub Scouts, yes. But I don't think that you were ever asked to leave Cub Scouts. Yeah, Dad, I've been kicked out of everywhere. I've been kicked out of uh, city council meetings in 10 different states almost. Right. Um, I've been, it was suspended from LSU. Do you remember that? Here, show us two. Dad, that was one of the most traumatic times I've ever had. I remember I got, that very well when we went down there and had to... <laughs> And I think you set a record for being suspended because you were drinking at a tailgate between Old Miss and LSU. Yeah, that's true. Which is in a non-alcohol zone. I was so which drunk. was really unbelievable. But the best thing about all that, you haven't been drinking for I don't years. Know, for years, you're sober. So I'm not sober, but go ahead. Well, you, unless it's diet cokes, but you, know, you you got off from drinking, which was a big deal because that was. I think you totaled your car at LSU from drinking. Yes, I did total it. I, I think that there was a other type of conduct at L LSU fighting. Fighting. Uh, yeah, now I'm fighting again. And now, fighting. now you're fighting. But it's been a struggle for you, but you finally have found something, and people don't realize you, you're not an overnight success. You've been trying to do this for 25 years. I have. That, but, people don't realize yeah. that even I was doing improv comedy in eighth grade. Well, I still have a book when you were in the fourth grade with your writing in there. I want to be a Las Vegas comedian. And I showed you that book several times. And you wrote that in the fourth grade. You wanted to be an entertainer. When you ran for office at the Highland Park Middle School, you did your Steinios commercial. Mm, you remember that? Which I thought. We got to bring that back. You got to bring. You got to do the Steinios. You got to play a song and do Steinios here. They got to play that. that I got to find was, that. I made a song, Jimmy, in eighth grade. Steinios. It won me the Enterprise City Mayor. I was right. The you were the mayor, Enterprise City Mayor. Enterprise City. Then when you got to the high school, you were the uh, not the student council. Uh, I was student council vice president. One student. It was called something else. There was a student council. Then there was another government. Uh, well, there's a players' council on the football team, but no, I, no, no. Yeah, there was two Highland Park student deals that you were the vice, when you were the vice president, not student council, it was another group. The ticket club. No, one the ticket. It was an election. Uh, the and, captain of the football team. No, that that was. You also were an officer in a Highland Park group, but it wasn't student council. I don't remember what group that is. Yeah, it was the vice. You were the vice president, and you had to give that up. Because of the senior year when you dressed as Fred Flintstone. And I got caught drinking at the dance. I caught drinking to dance. I got suspended in high school, Jimmy, for drinking at a school dance. But I wasn't drunk. My date was drunk. She got in trouble and then she ratted on me. I ran away, Jimmy. Uh, okay, so listen to this. They have the Sadie Hawkins dance where the girls ask the guys. We call it highlights. A girl asked me to go with her. She got caught being drunk. They knew I was her date, so they just expected that I was drunk as well. When they came and found me in the school dance, I'm dressed in a full Fred Flintstone outfit, and I live one block away from the high school. So as soon as they, the principal tried to, you know, call... Vice they, principal. The vice principal. But I'm saying the teachers got me, and they brought me to the principal, principal's office during the dance, during the school dance. And as soon as I go to the principal's oh office, gosh. I'm like, this is not good. I see a cop, and then I see the girl... Betsy, she's getting a ticket. So I don't even stand to talk. I just run. I just literally turn away and I just turn around and run out of the school. In your Fred Flintstone in outfit. In my Fred Flintstone outfit, jump down the stairs, get away, make it home. And then I don't even tell my dad. I'm so scared that weekend. I actually went out of town to a lake house after the thing. I don't even tell my dad till Monday. And this is why my dad has my back so much. So we go into the meeting, and it's the vice principal, like Nyman, which what, I don't even remember. Uh, Jimmy Nimitz. Uh, oh, yeah, Nimitz. Okay, not uh, Nimitz, but Jimmy. Uh, he was uh, a great, I went to school with him. I can't. Neitzel? What was Neitzel, it? Neitzel. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Neitzel. Neitzel. Very nice uh, man. So Jimmy Neitzel, the vice president. So I have not told my dad that I ran away from the school and that I was drunk. And the school, this is on a Saturday night or Friday night of the dance, so they didn't see me till Monday. So first period, Monday morning, they call me into the vice principal's office. And I, I'm, I'm so scared I haven't told my dad yet. 
My dad didn't know anything about it. My dad, they call him. They're like, you know, dad needs to come up here. We got to talk to him. You know, parent teacher conference, whatever the hell they call it. As soon as my dad sits down, the principal's like, yeah, we're going to be suspending your son for six weeks because he was drunk at the school dance. And my dad said, well, how do you know he was drunk if he was if he ran away? Right. So even though my dad probably knew that I probably had been drinking, he had my back, Jimmy, so much so that he fought it. We sued the school and we were with the, still the school kind of won because they got me for insubordination. So I still had to do a week instead of six weeks. I mean, it was a victory, but I still got suspended. So, Dad, I'm very appreciative you had my back. Well, the suit wasn't that. The suit was when you pushed the young man who was your friend in the cool room and y'all were just playing. That's not the lawsuit. <laughs> Wilson Brown? When you pushed Wilson and they removed you as captain of the football team. Temporarily, because temporarily. we got it straightened out. And then they were going to do something else. So that that was over, over that deal. No, but we also, had, I'm pretty sure we had to sue on the on the drinking thing. Yeah, I think we did because that was. Yeah, the, we yeah. sued the school yeah, multiple the times. The, at the end of the year. Uh, so, pa uh, Papa Stein, when you say I told Alex not to do it and he didn't listen to me, I feel that in my soul because that's basically been what I say every day for the last six months. And I just pray he listens to me. So, Dad, this is what I do with Jimmy. Jimmy's my producer. He went to Princeton. He's really smart. His, both of his parents, you know, well-to-do. He's, you know, a nice young kid. But I have this thing that I call it where I fade to Jimmy. So if there's a bad gambler in Vegas, right? Let's say you're a sports gambler. These people that are pro sports gamblers, they call it fade me. So they pick their picks. And since they're losing, you pick the opposite. It's called fading someone. So whatever Jimmy tells me to do, I just fade it. I do the exact opposite. And I still haven't caught on to use reverse psychology. Yeah, he gets really, he gets really. Well, bad. it wasn't reverse psychology. I just, but you got to realize when Alex graduated from LSU, he came home, said, Dad, I'm going to Cal California and left like a week later. He didn't know anybody. He went out to Los Angeles, very little money, struggled. He lived in areas so bad, I tried to give him a gift for Christmas and he couldn't carry the gift because his luggage, because he was worried he would get mugged. It was that bad. I, <laughs> no, I did. I lived on Yucca Boulevard in Hollywood. Now it's really bad with all the homeless people. But it was there are still homeless people there. But it, in t this is ten years ago. It was a lot less. And I also remember where he would eat would be at the a McDonald's. Well, not McDonald's. That little like a Seven Eleven. After nine, you the could bodega. Get, you could get something for a dollar. Uh, you know, the worst foods and everything. So, well, the stuff that was about to expire. Yeah, yeah, I would buy the expired food, Jimmy. When yeah. I lived in L.A., I didn't have any money, so I'd go there at 9 o'clock and they close at 10, and I would buy all the expired food that was in the case. That's awesome. All yeah, right, and, and he, also, uh, Papa Stein, this is big. So I don't know if you know what a super chat is, but basically the live viewers can pay to have their comment read. And Mikey just sent a super chat saying, Primetime Papa Stein, you did a great job raising a hero provocateur. So, and they paid, how much did they pay for that? Jimmy? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. To say that. Thank you very much for that comment. I appreciate it very much. We salute you, sir. So thank you. Okay, so we got to get into a little and topic. Mikey, I have a lot of people that tell me that too, so thank you. Well, that makes me feel good. Okay, hey, are we going to get Letty on for a few yeah, minutes? Yeah, we're calling her right okay, now. Okay, so call her, and then we're going to get into it. So uh, we're probably not going to get too much into politics tonight, Dad, but what do you think about how there's no Speaker of the House? You think that's pretty bad? Well, I like this new. I don't know much about him, but I'm glad they have that temporary guy, Patrick Henry. You like you like that guy? No, I don't know that I like him, but it, maybe there's be some order now, and they can get some good yeah, government business done. That, this is one thing, though. I, I know you've always. I don't know him enough not to like him, or or, or, or like too, him, have an or opinion. Or like him. Yeah. No, but Dad, this is one thing you always told me as a kid. You said, "Don't trust anybody." If somebody tells you it's raining, I remember you telling me this. You if said, it's raining. That's fine, but you need to go outside and get hit by the rain before you know it's raining out. I know, so don't you feel, and you know this, that the government lies to us about stuff. They would tell us that it's raining and it's not raining, or vice versa, that it's not raining and it is raining. You have I, a lot of government trust. I'm very, yeah, well, I, 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 uh, I don't know how to answer that question. I always like to trust, but verify. Trust but verify. So, Dad, what this, what we want to try to do is we want to create a campaign where they would nominate me for Speaker of the House. So, do we have this? Who made this? Vox Ockley. Well, it's too small now. You can't. We got, we got a bigger one. Uh, can you Vox show Ockley did a FS2. great job with this edit. So that's me, Dad. I know it's hard to tell if you look at that screen. That's me as a Speaker of the House in my Gays for Palestine shirt. That's the future of America, right there, Dad. That's me, Gays for Palestine. Mm -hmm. 
Again, I'm going to reserve comment on any of that. Nothing, no I'm gay comment. Reserve, That's fair. I'm, I'm going to reserve comments on any of that. Did, did you know, uh, show both of us big, did you know that uh, Barack Obama wrote a bunch of letters to his ex-girlfriend that he fantasized about having gay sex with men? No, I did not. You didn't know that? No, I didn't. Jimmy, confirm that, because my dad's probably thinking I made that up. No, that's one of the few things he hasn't made up on this show. It just came out this year. The woman's letter got republished, and it said that he fantasized about being with guys. In today's world, uh, I wouldn't believe any letter I saw or anything. Uh, anything can be created. But this was, no, but this letter is actually verified. It's, it's legit. Well, I mean, I, I don't know how, how they'd verify it, but so there's anyway, just so much was, misinformation, misdocuments. Uh, but this was real. They, they verified you, this. Uh, Russians that have come in our country. Oh, Dad, Russians. Oh, my God. All right, perfect time for an ad read. Oh, my gosh. Okay, all right, listen up. I've got something really cool and honestly potentially life-saving to share with you. Ever heard of the Wellness Company? If you haven't, you will. But let me be the first to tell you a little bit about them and specifically their medical emergency kit. Awake doctors like Dr. Peter McCullough started the Wellness Company to build a parallel healthcare system and bring about real change in medicine. Part of that change is helping you take control of your health and supporting you through whatever the next thing is that gets thrown our way. Over 40% of Americans say they'd avoid a doctor or hospital unless it was a catastrophic situation. That's where the wellness company steps in with their medical emergency kit. It's a lifeline, guys. Natural disasters, supply chain shortages, medical emergencies, etc. Rest easy knowing that you have emergency antibiotics, emergency antivirals, and emergency antiparasitics on hand to help keep you and your family safe. The kit includes a comprehensive guidebook so you'll know exactly when and how to use each individual item. Don't sit around until it's too late. Head to twc.health slash prime and grab your medical emergency kit today. That's twc.health slash prime. Use the code prime. It saves you 10% at checkout. Guys, it's time to take control of your health and stay one step ahead. That's where twc.health slash prime can help you guys out. All right. Now, Dad, we're going we're gonna to talk to this girl for a few minutes. Her name's Letty. Her and I were on a reality show together. So we welcome on the one, the only, Letty from Fish Tank. Hi. Can you hear it, Dad? <laughs> okay, Letty, you're here with my dad. Can you show all of us? Okay, yeah. Dad? We got to One second. Letty, my dad. So, Dad, this woman and I. Is this your you, actual dad? This is my biological father, Letty. Really? Yes. Tell him what I did to you Her in the house. I, Her and I lived in a house, and we tortured each other. Her and I were on a team. I threw eggs well, on her. More like you tortured me. It wasn't really tortured me back out. too, Letty. You're a pretty tough cookie. Let's not act like you uh, did. Did I torture you? No, because I love you, Letty. That's why you didn't torture me. You just showed me tough love is what I called it. <laughs> I tortured you with my seductive powers. Dad, we had to actually sign a treaty on this show. It got so crazy. They were throwing fecal matter on people. Letty, tell my dad about how that happened, how that transpired. I didn't glass do that. Off? I didn't. Not me, not me. Not Letty. No, this, is, this is in the glass house. This is a new show, guys, that a guy by the name of Sam Hyde, he's one of the best independent content creators out there right now. He's a comedian. He did Glass House, but on his own. He set up 25 cameras, maybe even more. I forget how many cameras it was. But Letty was in the show. I was on the show. And Letty was, she actually got second place. Right, Letty? You got second, technically? Yeah, we both won the show. I was like the runner up and won 20 grand. 20,000 bucks, but she had to live in a house for 45 days and she had to eat food. What was some of the grosser stuff you had to eat? Oh my God, it was definitely the stuff that Chris cooked. He made like this meat salad that had every kind of meat imaginable in it and like way too much salt. I couldn't even stomach like two bites of it. I had to go to the bathroom right after. <laughs> Okay, so Letty, yeah. I, I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but I know you're kind of arguing with some of your castmates, and we don't have to get into it too much, but I want to just play this clip where you destroyed uh, John's Bible. We love this clip because this is a funny clip, so let's run it, and then I want to get your response to it. Letty, okay. you are my favorite fish. Keep your head up. John deserves it. Do it. Do it. Just do it. So she, that, the oh, she guys in the show, she put his Bible in the washing machine. How ridiculous is that? So he threw that on her. He threw the wet Bible. Dad, they were trapped in this house for 45 days. Where was this filmed? This is filmed. Where were we in Rhode Island? Uh, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. What channel was it on? It was on the internet. 
And that oh. they, they've raised over $1.2 million in Super Chats. In their upcoming project, they've over, raised over a million dollars. I believe. Oh. Right, Letty? How much did they raise yeah, for the new is... episode? You were on this show, Ellie? I was on this show. Yeah. It was like something like a million dollars. Yeah. This is the part where he tries to rip my passport up. And, and he says, see, this is the, I guess this is my point. I'm, I'm not trying to white knight for John. I know we had him on the show. But he said that he could have ripped your passport and didn't. So I guess, listen, we don't have to get too much into it, but is there really beef there? I feel like I kind of want to smooth it over personally for you guys, if that's possible. Um, well, I did uh, forgive him after the show for everything because, you know, when he came back on, like, at first at the beginning of the show, we were friends. Everything was great. Um, when he came back on, I guess the internet had affected him, like had told him things about me. He would uh, come up like close to me, like yell at me, like in my face, call me like a whore, a slut, like just a bunch of different things. Um, so after all that, um, you know, the producers kind of wanted me to get him back, told me put his Bible in the washer. I didn't I didn't even really want to do it. I had to be talked into it. But it was an air. It was a Bible he picked up at the airport. It wasn't like a family heirloom or anything like that. So I did do it, and I apologized to him after. And he did apologize to me after the show, also for how he treated me. We ended up streaming together, which was great. And then um, I don't, I don't really want to talk about this part because we don't have to talk about this part. But are you worried after you destroy that Bible that Satan's going to cast you to hell for eternity? Um. <laughs> I was I was praying. I was praying after I put it in the washer and before I did it too. I was like, please. But honestly, I think uh, that God probably appreciates content. I don't know. Maybe he he was you watching. God watches and... TikTok. Do you think that's true, Jimmy? Can you verify that Jimmy studied theology? Does Does Jesus watch TikTok? Absolutely not. Oh. God definitely watches TikTok, and he sees wars as entertainment. Oh, I don't, I don't know if I disagree Jeez. with that. Well, the war is entertainment. <laughs> Jimmy, they've had genocides for years. I don't know. And, I, and I, listen, I'm a conflict interventionalist. I'm anti-war. I really feel, I mean, I, I don't like Hamas at well, all. So but, am I. But I don't really want Gaza, all those stray cats that are going to get killed, all those stray dogs. Forget about, you know, Israel and Palestine. I'm worried about those damn cats, Dad. That's why I don't want them to bomb Gaza. You know, that, that's not really a nice name to call them. Call what? That's dogs. No, shut up, Letty. Get in the I, show, Letty. Woody, tell them where they can find you. I gotta go. I gotta talk to my dad. We didn't call anybody dogs. Oh, dad. And Letty, one last thing. Letty, I love this girl, but Letty and I got in a big fight. She's very, what is it, French style? She doesn't shave her armpits, dad. Well, a lot of girls in France don't do that. My, that's my, dad, my dad's on your side, Letty. What do you think about that? You know, I think that your dad is a very respectable man because I was listening before, like, you put me in, huh? and um, he seems very respectable. But not me. I'm an idiot. I know. It's, I get yeah, a lot. I don't know why you ended up this way. Letty, Please, tell, Dad, do you know why I'm like this? Be sure and tell her what your middle name was for a long time, Alex. But you can tell her. You can spell it. M M O R O N Moron. That's my nickname. That's my middle name. My dad's been calling me a moron my whole life, Letty. So when you make fun of me, it means nothing. All right. Yeah. So remember that. <laughs> that was done for fun too. Yeah, was, real uh, fun. The name real was really fun. it was Mo and then Ron. It was two names. It was two names. Oh, okay. Uh, two middle names. Yeah. <laughs> and this is because I like Billy Bob, but our new one, so I, I wanted a Mo Ron. And, and I want to say this: I love my dad more <laughs> than anybody in this world. I would do anything for him. But as a kid, my dad would constantly take me to buffets while still fat shaming me. Wow. We did go to a lot of buffets. Yeah, we went to so many buffets. Alex I mean, was a buffet king. He, Dad, Alex did the buffets backwards. Tell him about the time we got kicked out of the True Lux buffet. For well, he went, wasn't, when Alex went to True Lux one night with two of his football friends, and they had all you could eat. Uh, Lobster. Lobsters. The mm -hmm. first week was fine. Second week, you could tell they were really. So they did it once a week. So the third week, we went threw week. them out, and then they changed it, and now it's crab. It's been like that. Uh, True Lux lobster place. But, uh, they, they broke them. I think they ate about 54 lobsters one night. Uh, I ate 54 lobsters, and we got kicked out. But of he two spent of a lot of time in Chinese buffets and buffets in New York and San Francisco. <laughs> we love he, the Chinese so, buffet. Letty, do you like the Chinese buffet? 
Yes, but if you ate 54 lobsters, no, I would between four shame people, three, three of us, yeah, three, was, three, three, three of us, between, yeah. between three people, I would still fat shaming. But they wouldn't eat the salads or anything. They try yeah, to see. Fill this up. is how it works. Okay, okay. Let me let me clarify. So this are super awesome high end restaurants called Trulux. They do a once a week offering where they have all you can eat lobster, but it's like 120 bucks. But part of the gimmick is they give you salad, soup, and they give you other entrees that are on the menu. So when you get there, they try to load you up on that. When my dad and I walked in there, we were straight white. Triz, I don't want to say it on the air. We said we don't want any salads, we don't want any sides. We just want a Coca Cola and ten lobsters. So they were accommodating. They let us eat all the lobsters, but but the third time we went there, they said, "Sir, you ate a month's supply of lobsters in three visits. You can't eat these lobsters anymore." That's what they said, Letty, and they kicked us out. So, well, that's the smart way to do it. Skip the salad, eat the expensive stuff. Like, and then they changed just, it to stone crab, though, Letty. So now it's stone crab. You can't. So I ended their lobster, and now they still have the stone crab. But stone crab. It was all your fault. Oh. They're gonna have you like on a poster, like saying. Letty, where fans. are you from? Or where, where are you from? Where Where did you grow up, Letty? Canada. Okay. Oh, Canada. And what city? Um, like near Toronto. Very oh, awesome. Near okay. Toronto. Great. Great. Yeah. But I was born in Ukraine. Oh, wow. She's okay. Ukrainian, Dad, and she always gets mad because I hate all the funding to Ukraine. Her and I always argue about that. Hey, but what, what's the deal? Is Vladimir Zelensky, I mean, do you think he's sweating bullets now that Israel's getting all the love? Um, You know, I'm going to stay diplomatic like your father and not comment on war because... Uh, I'm a woman, so why are you asking me about war? Hey, very. that's a good answer. That's a great answer. Okay, Letty, before you go, tell them how they can find you and support you. Uh, my Twitter is born to piss. Letty, I... my dad made a weird face when you said that name. Dad, her username is born to piss. Okay. Is that not a good handle? No comment, Letty. <laughs> Okay. That's not good. The no, a, no comment. No, is no, not. no, no, no. You seem like a very sweet person. It's, a, it's an easy handle to to remember for sure. Oh yeah, Alex, Alex, I, Alex, remember. I, I gotta jump in. I gotta jump oh, in. Oh, you gotta yeah, let it go. Brandon. What's up, girl? What's up? Hey, I just want to say real quick. Alec likes to talk about how you use poop as a weapon, but you can come and Amber Heard my bed anytime you want, girl. Oh my gosh, Brandon, you're trying to ask her to poop in your bed, basically. I'm not saying like go for it, but if that Jeez. you know gets the ball rolling. I mean, Brandon, J Brandon, don't do this. Well, Look, you Alex, can read my shirt here. There Brandon, you go. That, Brandon has a monogamous. Big, Brandon has a little bit of a crush on. So me. I'm not I'm not pooping on anyone else's bed except one guy. That works for me, girl. Wait, wait, wait what? You do you would poop on one guy's bed though? Go back. Wait, wait, I missed all that. I was talking to my dad. So you would poop in a man's bed, Letty. You would Amber heard him. If he pissed me off. What if he made you really happy? What if he made you super happy? Then, probably the same, you know? Okay. Some people poop when they get excited. It's just an emotional reaction. I know, my dog Ginger poops every time I get home. She just starts pooping. It's terrible. All right, lady, you gotta go. We shame. got 20 minutes. Oh, but Brandon, shoot your shot before we go. If I see John, it's on site. I got you, girl. He's got your back. If John comes here, it's on site, lady. All right, we love you. We'll talk to you again soon, lady. Oh, and guys, watch okay. the first episode of Fish Tank. It's on YouTube and fishtank.live. Letty is on every episode, so make sure to check out the episodic ones that are coming out. Uh, how often are they going to come out, Letty? Uh, once a week. Once a week. So stay tuned. And there's a lot of episodes. So, guys, make sure to go follow Letty, Born to Piss. I can't believe I'm saying that in front of my dad, but I say a lot worse. All right, bye, Letty. Get out of here. Bye. All right, Jimmy, are you going to do your freaking thing now? Yeah, let me read some of the super chats we missed. Okay, super chat uh, questions. It, well, the only one that makes sense now is anthony jones papa stein do you remember where you were when jfk was assassinated by the cia uh i, I remember exactly where i was when uh john kennedy was assassinated i was at bradfield elementary school i think i was in the fourth grade and i remember the announcer the principal coming over and announcing the president had been shot and we were dismissed uh, right after that announcement what a sweet way to get off school. No, yeah. hey, but you know, it's, you know, you mentioned that, but on a serious note, Dad, and I talk about this, I tell this story all the time. So I remember 9-11, like it was yesterday, I remember I was in, in Miss Colpon's class, and you came to get me out of school, Dad, and I remember one of the scariest things of 9-11, obviously watching the planes go down, but I remember seeing you, you weren't like, wham, 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 but you were at home, you were sitting there crying, and I asked you what's going on, and you had no idea. And I remember being so scared because I'm like, oh, my dad knows everything. You know, my dad knows everything. And you had no idea. And I remember that was one of Did the... Did you recall I went to Afghanistan? <laughs> yeah, no, my dad went and fed the troops right after. And it, 90 you... days later. I mean, 30 days later, we were in Uzbekistan, and we fed uh, a group from Dallas went to take uh, 
hamburgers and steaks. Uh, no, I remember it clearly. I was mission. scared to death you were going to get blown up by an IUD right. or IED or whatever right. they're called. What do they call Jimmy, IEDs? Uh, IUD. I think that's what the girls have in there to not get pregnant. Same thing. Yeah, it was terrible seeing those planes crash into the building. No, but I'm saying for me, the scariest thing is when I was asking you, like, what is this? And you were literally like, I don't know. You, I don't know what this is. It's terror. I don't know. This is really bad. Because nobody knew. I'm saying right after it happened, nobody knew what it was. So I just remember vaguely. And you might recall we were at those buildings two weeks before. We were, well, two weeks Walt, in a year. One year and two weeks. With Walt and... Uh, we were Labor Day the year before. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We are like... A year and two weeks, we were staying at the hotel that got taken out. I think it was the Marriott or whatever, Sheridan, whatever hotel. Right. So we could have been uh, victims of 9-11, but we don't want to be victims. Okay, so now, we have another uh, ad read? Yeah, we do. Oh, we got three ad reads. That, that's good. That's good that we got ads. That's, that's money in the bank. Shorty, what you drink? All right, now, my bookie, guys, betting on your favorite sports team is a lot of fun, and it can even be profitable when you have a good sense of what you're doing. That's where a good sports book can really come in handy. But how do you know you're choosing the right one? When your money is on the line, you need to choose a trusted sports book that gives you the tools to win, like my bookie. At my bookie, it doesn't matter if your team is up or down. You can easily cash out or bet the game live to come out on the winning side. Use my bookie for daily odds boosts, same game parlays, and take advantage of a huge prize pool of contests. Plus, my bookie has a no strings attached cash bonus that lets you deposit and withdraw quickly. Just use a promo code Alex on your first deposit and receive up to $200 in cash. Again, that's promo code Alex to claim your own cash bonus now. Try the MyBookie money bag to grab a potential Super Bowl frontrunner at long shot odds. That's plus 38,000 on the Eagles and Chiefs. You won't find odds like that anywhere else. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere, only with MyBookie. And guys, remember to gamble responsibly. I like to gamble a little bit. I try not to do it. Um, I would encourage you, if you do want to gamble, go to my bookie. But at the same time, I would probably just say, be very cautious and don't bet anything you can't lose. I wanted to make that very clear. All right, now, Jimmy, come on, we need an audience. Aiden, come sit down here. Sit next to White Darius. <sighs> Black Darius. All right, now, Dad, Jimmy is a stand-up comedian, and he's opening up for me this weekend with Gavin McInnes. You need to come on Friday and Saturday at TK's Comedy Club. You're going to sit right here? No, I'm going to do I'm just not going to. Is that in Dallas, Alex? I'm yeah, gonna, TK. I'm stand right there. We're a little bit okay, set Addison. yourself up. So set yourself okay, up. Okay. So he's gonna. What Jimmy's gonna do is he's gonna tell his jokes that he thinks are so funny. Mm -hmm. You might need to back up a little. And I'm gonna shoot him with his gun every time he's not funny. Do you okay. understand that, Dad? And Dad, this actually hurts. Watch, I'm gonna shoot him one time for okay. a test shot. Oh gosh. Oh shit. Okay. Uh, Try not to cuss in front of my father. Sorry. Oh, th that hurts a lot. I know, it hurts a lot. <laughs> I know. When you're really close, it hurts. I'm not gonna shoot you if the jokes are funny. Okay. Dad. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> Tell the joke. All right. I found out there's a. Re oh wait, I have to stand up. <laughs> Shoot, that's gonna hurt. Just, just, it's not. You're gonna be fine. Just okay, gonna okay. Hurt a little bit. Can you, can you hear me? Boo. Okay, okay. All right. I heard there's a real organization called Queers for Palestine. That's like feminists for Saudi Arabia, whales for Japan. Michael Jackson fans against child endangerment. Michael Jackson's innocent. Oh shit. Okay, okay. Um, okay. All right, can I, I'm going to do some Hamas jokes. Please, go. You tell me if they're going Okay. Hamas will never be successful because of their awful branding. They're named after the most popular cuisine in their region, hummus. The Sinaloa cartel wouldn't intimidate anyone if they were just called queso. Bad joke. Okay. I like what you're thinking, though. I like, okay. I like oh, the Oh, then you'll, you'll like, like this one. I like that. Like or it's like, or if the African terrorist group Boko Haram was called, I'm not eating today. <laughs> oh my gosh, because they have food sustenance they, issues. They, they have have oh, I get it. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. That was that one is not bad. I okay. kind of like that. I'm sorry for shooting you in the butt. Okay. Um, is so Israel told Palestine to evacuate the Gaza Strip, which they should be good at. There are no traffic accidents in Gaza because they don't let their women drive. Okay, I don't know. That's <laughs> okay. Well, but no, 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 no. It's not a sex. Ow, shoot. It hurts in the back. It's it's <laughs> it's not a sexist thing. They can't see all the little eye slits. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll go with um. One more joke. Okay. I'll end with a 9/11 joke. Oh my gosh. My dad just. Oh had a, no. He doesn't want to be a part of it. Does about how my dad and I spent 9/11 together, and now you're gonna lampoon it. I'm going to say the it. joke. Okay. Say the joke. <laughs> okay. Um, my wife is 11 years older than I am, which is weird because we had totally different childhoods. Like I only learned about 9/11, but she got to watch it live. Talk about jealous.
Okay, get off this. Side. <laughs> I think the funny part is when you shoot him. Yeah, I know. That was the only funny part. And I don't act like that hurt, Jimmy. Jimmy played football at Princeton, Dad. Can you believe that? Yeah. yeah. Jimmy, know. it's called moving the mic stand out of the cameras. Wait. All right. So. <laughs> What's the fleeing? Okay, now, Dad, I don't want to get in trouble for this, but since this has been a very gay-heavy episode, did you know that I got in trouble for throwing hot dogs, right? Yes. You know that? But they were chicken hot dogs. They were turkey hot dogs, yes. Turkey. But in honor of that, come here, Darius. I'm going to feed Darius one of these hot dogs to show that we love support, Darius. Can you see my dad, too? Make sure to cut to my dad. Oh, no. No, poor... I, Papa Stein, I, I, I don't want to do this, Dad. I don't want I to. I really him. like him. I don't want you I to do this. I don't want to You're... do this, Darius. But no, eat no, no. Okay, Darius. I, no, 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 no. What happened last time we did something what like this? What happened last time? Did we get in trouble? We got called in the principal's office. I woke up to a text of a screenshot. Okay, being... we'll just put the gummy hot dog on his yeah, head. Yeah, just then. do that. All right, all all right just leave. Will still make Stop talking about the black activist. Okay, all right. Don't let that gummy fall off your head. Now, Dad, you see, Darius is kind of a bizarre cat. Is he, to say the least? I wouldn't use bizarre, but uh, eclectic, maybe. Well, not see, you know, this is what's funny. You know, show all of us. I don't know if you can see all of us. Darius, maybe get right here so you're in the shot. Like, you know how we stage it. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> so Darius was just was just being interviewed by my dad. Darius, now tell him that you were kind of pressing him hard. You asked him about his aunt. You asked him the fact that he can't drive a car. And one thing I didn't tell you, Dad, this is another red flag. Darius, I have to pay him in cash because he doesn't have a bank account. So what do you think that, that is all about, Dad? You know, I, I, I don't know, but there's a lot of workers like Darius that uh, Darius is off the books for some reason. Uh, when's the last time you filed a tax return, Darius? We'll get back to that. You might want to take the Fifth <laughs> Amendment. Thank yeah, you. so let's take a Fifth Amendment. So you don't pay taxes, Darius, I'm seeing we're finding out. But he probably, did you get any stimulus? Did yeah. you get stimulus money, Darius? What did you do with the stimulus money? No, I, I, I never got any. Why not? You never got any COVID money? Well, because I was holding signs, you know. Uh, you didn't get the free 600 bucks? No, not even once, you know. Are you saying you made too much money that you weren't eligible from holding signs? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> not even. Darius, not even. Okay, okay, now, now let's show Aiden. Social Security, how are you going to get Social right Security? Here, so we can see the camera now, Dad. Aiden wrote some questions for you. Aiden, please show Aiden, and now he's going to ask your questions. Do so you want to ask my dad, Aiden? Oh, well, I was just wondering, can I do a, like a ride-along uh, with a bounty hunter going after a single mom or a, you know, stripper? You know, you could do a ride ride along with them. I'm sure they maybe would like you to be an assistant bat bounty hunter. That's what I'm saying. We'll, see, we'll see if we could assist, you know, set you up with somebody that would help you. Do you know how to work a firearm? Uh, yeah. I mean, it can be very dangerous. Yeah, I know. It's a very dangerous, like... Because now, especially now, there's been a couple bounty hunters killed in Dallas County in the last two years or three years. One was out in Rockwell. There's a bad shootout. Uh, uh, it's, it's changed quite a bit because the person that jumps bond now is a little more desperate and uh so you think it's dangerous it's more a dangerous whole, to be i think a, it's a lot a, more a dangerous. bounty hunter right now i think it's a lot more dangerous for because you took me on some bounty hunter skips as a kid yeah but we'd never do it now like i would never try to arrest uh anybody for a a job ever uh, again no pa, just, pa, oh sorry oh what, what we dude? got we got a super chat as a question for papa stein okay. papa stein how many grandkids would you like alex and oh dad answer this truthfully because alex no and uh helen to make zero <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, listen, Dad. Okay, this goes against everything. This is a good question. Everybody, Dad, in the conservative movement, they say you need to have babies. I do want to have babies. But my whole life, Jimmy, my whole life, I said, Dad, I'm going to get a girl pregnant. And what have you always said? How are you going to reverse the vasectomy you got when you went to LSU? That's what I'm saying. My dad Ooh. had me uh, get a vasectomy without me knowing. They were. I was in a hospital getting a... I was getting knee surgery. No, and you then knew. he added that onto it. I can't tell if you're kidding, which is scary. <laughs> A but he doesn't want me to have a bunch of babies, though, Dad. I mean, you don't think he'd be a great grandfather? Yeah, I, I just don't want. I don't think Alex. Uh, say it. Well, well, I'm not sure exactly how to say, but I don't think children would be his forte. He's a child himself, so you'd have a child raising a child. I'm not a child. I'm not a child. Does a child act like this? Dad, show it. Does a child act like this? No, a child doesn't act like. I act like an adult, Dad. That's how an adult acts, right, Darius? Tell him that. Tell him I'm an adult. Tell him I'm an adult. Say I'm an adult, Darius. This is how an adult.
adult acts. Ah, tell him, Darius. <laughs> Say, Alex is an adult. <laughs> Alex is an adult. Say it louder. <laughs> Say right. I'm an adult, Darius. <laughs> Say I'm an adult now, so he knows. Alex is an adult. I promise. So, so should I not make an Uncle Alex shirt for my daughter? For Alex with yeah, my she, daughter? You, you know, you can make. I wouldn't call him Uncle uh, Alex. Uh, you don't want to traumatize her. Wait, and I'm gonna give her beer underage. Yeah. yeah. You know, someone's my my brother doesn't live here, so everyone needs a sketchy uncle. So. Uh, well, he's what like to say he would be the crazy uncle that everybody talk, talks hey, about. Hey, Dad, give Jimmy some fatherly advice. He did just get his wife pregnant. He really is expensive. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's my hot dad summer shirt. <laughs> How far along is she? Like, she's literally about to give birth. I'm not kidding. Hey, did you take the Lamage class where you can be in the delivery room? We're actually doing that on Saturday. We're doing some well, That's class. a great deal because I was in the delivery room with, with Alex. So it's a really important thing to do that, can I think. Tell him what I looked like when I was delivered, Dad. It was scary. He was covered in blood. It truly was. It didn't look like a human. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he was covered in hair. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of nasty. You're just like, uh, can you like wash? Hey, hey, off White here? Darius, why don't you it's, shut it's up? It's kind of like Thank the old you. joke. You want to slap the mother when Alex was delivered. <laughs> this, uh, Did the doctor slap my mom? No. 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 Thank God. Your mom was in a hard labor. She finally had to have a C-section. I she was in so labor big. for like 20 years. I mean, 20. Uh, uh, 20 hours, Holy long time. Shit. They finally no. had to do her busy. She was in for a long time. They had to do it for uh, health-wise to bring you out with a C-section. So how how big was Alex? It was 13 pounds. Uh, no, it was, it was like 11. He, he, oh Alex was big. It was, it was a 10, <laughs> 10, 3 or something. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm surprised I can't, can't, can't remember, but... He, he just had a birthday on the 8th of this month, so. Oh, okay. Well, Alex, we have some videos uh, if you still want to oh, get to Oh, we do to need those. to react to those videos, but real quick, Dad. Darius, when he acts bad, we have a little of this Windex. Show us full box. So when Darius acts bad, Dad, I go like this. Dad, open your mouth. Drink it. Drink it. <laughs> Glass cleaner. All right. I see it. And then his hair. Watch this, Dad. And look how bright it gets. A lot of people don't realize this. Like that? Look how new that head looks, Dad. Look how clean that is. Look at the light reflecting off oh. it. You could use that as a mirror. I could brush my teeth in this. All right, now, let's get back to the show. All right, Dad, I've been training for this boxing match. I know you're very familiar. You set me up with my trainer. I know you're a little nervous. A lot of people are saying that if I'm in there, I'm getting killed, you're going to throw in the towel. Is that true? I'm going to try to call the fight if you get hurt. If you if see it, me hurting? If it looks like it's going south, I'm going to try to call the fight. Yeah, but Dad, let me get beat up a little bit. You know I'm tough. Yeah, but I just don't want you to get some injury that uh, uh, a life-threatening injury or hit in your head or I'm something. I'm the one that's going to be giving life-threatening injury. So here, let's watch this clip. I want to get your instant reaction. Mike Harrington, you are not in the ring facing some of the strongest yeah, hands black. Gotta be I know, because this is just sparring. We're not hitting the but face I right now. We're not allowed to hit the heads. We don't have the headgear on. Box the toughest and strongest and darkest We're just sparring. This is 75%. Me. Everybody's like, so when oh, why aren't you doing this? We're just, we're just trying to hit. We're just doing cardio. The fight. You're moving He's good, though. I like the way you're moving a lot. There's so much sure improvement. It's a carnival of combat. Montoya's done a great job. In Tampa, Florida. Yeah, I'm, I'm a lot better than I was. I'm a lot better today than I was when I first started. No question. There's no doubt. And you've been working really hard on it. Yeah, I'm down to 220, a little under. So we're going to be really good tonight. So you've been working. So your dedication's been good on it. Just. You're getting into a field you don't know a lot about, but I feel comfortable with it. We got one of the best trainers in the country, Mr. Montoya. Montoya Boxing Gym. Guys, check it out on Military Parkway. Okay, now let's watch this clip. Darius, you can't hear this, but I want you to be able to hear it. I already watched it. All right, let's play the clip. I was cleaning my kitchen one day, and I looked down. I picked up a kitchen towel. There are so many items or so many meals, substances, whatever, that could give this hard, colorless, odorless consistency on a kitchen towel. Because he said the Liquid. towel was the smoothie. Mind you, he relieves himself when I'm on whatever I'm on. I beat that. <laughs> yeah. 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 I beat that. So, Dad, we're trying to have a similar show to Mari. We're trying to get. Did you like that clip? No, no, no. All right, fun. now, Darius, reenact that. Now, show Darius. Reenact that clip. You just watched it. What did he say? I I don't know she what, the say what did the what did the guy say? Aiden, you say it one time for him. Show Aiden. I beat that. Oh, oh. Don't say the N word like that. Oh Aaron. no! He's he said the word! Stop showing Aiden when he, he said, said the, the word. word. These are gonna get confused. 
We can't use the N word, Darius. You're always saying it. Here, show his head. Don't show it just. But no, I, I it's said. It's like the Pee Wee Herman nickel. magic word. You can't nickel. say it. I was saying nickel this time. I was cleaning my kitchen one day, and nickel I looked black. down. I picked up a Listen, towel. Listen, what he says. There are so many items or so many meals, substances, whatever, that could give this hard, colorless, odorless consistency on a kitchen towel. Because he said the towel was the smoothie. Mind you, he relieves himself when I'm on whatever I'm on. I beat that <laughs> Yeah. 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 All right, there he is. I beat that nigga up. I beat that nickel up. No! Stop. <laughs> Stop a mud hole in that nickel. <laughs> Uh, hey, Darius, we're literally just tell, asking you to say, I beat that shit. Why is I that know, so Dad, hard? I know, Dad. Why is Darius so hard? I'm trying to get him to... to uh, uh, you, you don't even know the line that he said, Darius. Sometimes he I just... said, you'll beat that nickel up. I got, okay. I got, I got, I got, a, I got a good question. question. Okay, okay. One, now show Aiden. Uh, let's show him. Uh, ask a question. We only okay. have a few minutes now, left in the show. There's a lot of affluent white female liberals, awfuls, who on Facebook are trying to get bailless bonds. They're trying oh, to get rid this? of... Bondsmen, bail in general, they believe that there should be no bail. Everyone is put in jail or everyone's let out free until their court case. And can you explain how catastrophically bad that would be? Great question. Very good question. Uh, well, New York would be an example of no bail with all the reoffenders. I understand there's 18 or 20 times somebody could be rearrested, re go out, commit criminal conduct. I don't know if a cash bail stops them from committing crimes, but they would not be getting out of jail so fast if they had to put up some monetary type of bail. Uh, but it's a very, very hot issue. And in, da in Dallas County, after the incident uh, that, that happened uh, in, uh, not Milwaukee, but I swear did it happen where the... Uh, which one? Which incident? San Francisco? About? No, the, the the last big one. Uh, well, there's a girl, there's a 24-year-old UCLA grad student that was killed by a guy that had 17 prior right, arrests in right. California. Yeah. And there's a similar right. thing in New York where, like, a young girl died by a guy that had been arrested over 20 times. And then there's a person in the subway where, you know, the guy was so supposed to a subway strangler where he was a quote-unquote oh. a hero, but that guy that he strangled was yeah. out, had a warrant, but was let, let out on an ROR bond, released on known recognizance, what this answer were, and then went and committed a crime and assault on a female. So this is the problem. I'll give you the answer. My dad wants to give you a diplomatic answer. Bail bondsmen are needed because they're like a third party police force to make sure that these people actually go to court. So once you remove that, these police officers, they can't arrest somebody and then also make sure that they go to court for that original arrest. So it's like the infrastructure to keep criminals, to go to court, to keep them in the system, the only way that works is with bail bonds. And so as soon as they get rid of the bail bonds, and then it's all relying on the state. The state charges the bond amount. They can charge, you know, a bond fee. And once that happens, it's going to be as messed up as anything the government runs. So it's really not good for the bail bond business. And it's hurting people, not even so much my dad, because he's basically retired, but it is hurting a lot of the mom and pop bail bonds, uh, men and women out there that opened a business, got loans, did all this stuff, and then out in California or New York, your whole entire livelihood is uh, ripped out from underneath you. And it even got so bad where my dad, at one point, couldn't even advertise on Google, right? Google will not let a bail bondsman uh, do AdWords along with payday lenders because they've determined it was predatory businesses. Which is not true because people and need to get out of That was all by the, a group uh, funded that. Uh, and see, we speak that out against went, it. That went to Google. Uh, and said, please keep uh, payday lenders and bail bondsmen off. Hey, Papa Stein, what's the wildest criminal you've had to deal with or just the weirdest crime? Frank Something Lucas. Interesting? A guy named Charles Harrelson, Woody Harrelson's dad. Uh, oh, you know that. I, know the story. I knew Charles. He killed a federal judge, but uh, uh, I'd talked to Charles. He was a brilliant. He was a card uh, shark. Brilliant, brilliant. He actually... I believe in when he was in federal prison in Marion, Indiana, he made a gate opener and they were able to open the gate and escape for three days. Wow. He made an electronic gate he made opener. An electronic gate opener and escape for three days. Uh, but Charles Harrelson was a very, very smart individual, but he was a, a pay, paid assassin. And that's Woody Harrelson's dad. That's Woody Harrelson's dad. And all of Charles Harrelson's family were wardens and very high officials in the Texas Department of Corrections. So that he came from a very strong law enforcement background.
Wow. Well, we learned a lot. Darius, okay, wow, we got... I did not... Yeah. The show's basically over. Tell Darius, Darius, tell my dad something that you learned about him, something positive, so he can have a better experience on the show. You're a natural. I, 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 hope, you, I hope you return, at least, you know, on, on, on occasion. Thank you. Tell him how you good know, of a job know. he did with me. You couldn't have done a better job if, if you know, I say so myself. And tell him how good I am to the gay and black community as well, please. Nobody better than Alex. Well, uh, uh, Alex. In that area. Alex should be because we've had friends of uh, African Amer or, or Americans, black Americans. I don't like to use the word African American, but black Americans that have been part of our family for a long time. And one of our employees had been with us 40 years. He's the first person to change Alex's diapers. Danny Mason. And it's yeah. taken so I was raised by black and, and, men. And told me about that. I, I told and, him. And, and people in the house. He's, uh, so some of this, uh, let's he, tell that part. he couldn't be anti-black. Yeah, any never. No, hey, but on a, be, on a serious note, Dad, you know my dad, every time he'd hire like a female babysitter, they would quit immediately because I was so bad. So my dad would oftentimes have to use the criminals that he got out of jail to babysit me, a guy by the name of Bobby Hart. Uh, what do you think about that, Dad? Having to, I could never get a babysitter. That was pretty tough, huh? Well, I don't know if Bobby Hart was ever a babysitter. He was a babysitter, Dad. Bobby Hart babysitted me a little bit. Uh, I, I don't recall that. If you say he does. He watched me in high school and middle school. I mean, I wasn't a baby, but, uh, I mean, he was my... Well, he picked up from school for me a couple of times. That's what I'm he, saying, he was Bobby, a fan of yours on the football, took photos I of know, you. I know, but you act like he didn't babysit me. I, mean, I use that term in yeah, a vague, right, general sense. Right. I mean, he watched me. When right. you would go out of town, he would watch. Right. And he was what? A felon, ex drug addict, had cirrhosis of the liver because he right. was such a. But he, all that, he got sober. He was clean. And we love Bobby Bermuda. Hart. R.I.P. Bobby Hart. I'm just trying to make the point is that I was raised. It, it, raised by criminals. I was raised by criminals, yes. And that's what makes me so special today, Jimmy. You need a criminal in your life. Jimmy doesn't have any criminals. His parents are highfalutin. He lives in a nice house. He's never been arrested. He's never been dealt with a criminal. Have you ever dealt with a prostitute or a pimp or anything? Have you ever bought drugs, Jimmy? Not on purpose. He's never even bought a drug, Dad. That's how big of a wimp he is. Right. Good for you, Jimmy. Good Thank for you, you, Jimmy. All right, hey, guys. Wait, wait, we got one more uh, twenty dollars super chat to okay. Papa Stein from Channel Julio. To reassure Papa Stein, here's money to purchase squeegees and spray bottles when the Blaze cancels this show, and Alex, Jimmy, Darius, and White Darius need to make money by cleaning cleaning the windshields of liberal limousines. Okay, <laughs> block that, refund that money, and block that person from the chat. Block. Now, next one. That was it. Block them. Oh, They're talking. Okay, last question, of White Darius. What was it like when Alex discovered internet porn? Oh God, <laughs> you can answer this <laughs> one. Because <laughs> like eighth grade, ninth grade. I wasn't re really to totally aware that he had discovered it. Uh, I never saw any signs of that. Oh, My dad's not, not good at the computer, so yeah, that's why yeah, I can't uh, figure it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. I was like, yeah, something eighth grade you, yeah. you would have been like terrible. No, we were on it, but one, one of the most times when I got most mad at me is my AOL screen name was Sexy Stein 69 in eighth grade, and my dad made me change it and take out the 69. So, Dad, I love you. Thank, Thank you so you. much you for too, coming Alex. on. I mean Thank that. Thank you for having me. No, one one last chat oh, one says, last on behalf of the chat rats, Thank you for not walking off set. Yeah, thank you for saying that. He got a little hairy at the beginning when he started talking about the gay stuff. You got a little uneasy. You don't know how close I came. <laughs> no, you won't run off the set. We got to do it. Darius right here. You better not run off the set. You better not run off the set yet. All right, guys, we end the show the same way every time in the freestyle finale. Hit the, hit the beat. Whoa. Yo, it's prime time. And I'm with my dad, Brett. And you know I want the best. I drive the red Corvette cause I'm a pimp on the blimp. Darius is always eating shrimp. Darius, say something. If you change your mind about the fights, you know I got you. If you can't handle them, I definitely can. I don't know what that That's means, cool. but I know that I'm a pimp on a blimp. Aiden, we love you. My dad over there. I'm out of retirement. Make sure to say, leave a chat. I love you guys. It's the end of our show. Good night.